Peppermint cures the colic often almost instantaneously, wrote Sir John Hill in 1740. It is most used for flatulence and wind colic, but may be employed for other sudden pains and cramping through the abdominal, wrote William Cook in 1869. All right, my friends, today we are going to learn about peppermint. This is a herb that has been used throughout the ages for enlightenment, for engagement, for entertainment, for all the different kinds of mints. So let's travel back in time and forward into the now and learn about mint and the benefits that it may have for you. Peppermint is one of the most popular herbs in the world. It has been used for centuries for many different conditions, both for health and for taste. This has also got a lot of antibacterial and microbial properties, so we see that this has been used in different cosmetic industry, as well as different healing, pharmaceuticals, and so much more. There are over a thousand medical papers just on peppermint and its essential oil. So today we're going to look at peppermint, we're going to look at some of the botany a little bit, some of the different hybrids of mint, a little bit about the history, and really some of the health benefits and how we can incorporate mint into our lives. So I hope you're ready to dive into mint with me and kind of start to understand how this might be one of the more valuable plants we can grow in our garden and start to work with an essential oil for our own needs. Peppermint is like any other mint where it has the square stems and the opposite leaves and the flowers that come out of the axils. You can see that it's got this whirl around where all the flowers come out in these nice little purple florets, which mm, have a minty flavor. If you're not quite sure whether it's mint, just give it a smell. You'll know it's mint. But you know, this is not the only mint. Obviously there's spearmint and chocolate mint and all kinds of different types of mint. There's many plants in the mint family that have a bit of a minty smell but aren't actually mint. What peppermint is, is actually a hybrid between a water mint and a spearmint. And so this plant has a little bit of a paradox with it. It's different from most mints. All mints have a lot of essential oils. They're antibacterial, antimicrobial. They have a lot of antioxidants in them that give them a healing benefit. But where peppermint is different is that most mints are calming down, whereas peppermint, and they have this cooling effect, peppermint has a cooling effect, but then also a warming effect, that pepper part of the peppermint. So this plant ends up being a little more medicinal than many other mints. And in fact, herbs like spearmint, we might use that for people who are compromised or have weak immune system, or for children because it's not quite as intense. We use peppermint in almost everything because it gives this uplifting quality that is relaxing, but also stimulating. And so let's dive into that and understand a little more why peppermint has become so popular. So menthol is the main essential oil that we find in peppermint, but it also has a lot of other oils like lemonol and menthone and rosmarinic acid, as well as we see that this herb contains a lot of flavonoids, which are antioxidants. It's got tannins that tighten the tissues, acetic acid, as well as gums and resins and terpenes. So there is a lot of active compounds in here. What we don't find in peppermint is a lot of uh, base nutrients, your kind of macro vitamins and minerals. Really, this is one of those herbs that its main action is in those oils to have that profound effect that it has. Wow, I'm feeling uplifted, but also calmed. And that's what I love about this plant. The unique properties of peppermint and its essential oils have led to being used for a wide variety of health conditions. Everything from digestive upset and cramping, to fatigue, mental alertness, to cleaning the breath, helping with weight loss, fighting bacteria, even working with cancer, and so much more. But let's start with digestion, because this is one of the main areas that I like to work with peppermint for. It's common practice to drink a cup of peppermint tea after a meal. Where peppermint really shines is in working with that gas and bloat and cramping and kind of pain that might come after a meal, if that's the case for us. It's classically known to help move wind in the abdominal tract. So this means flatulence in that sense. The paradoxical qualities of cooling and relaxing, but also warming and stimulating, give peppermint a really unique effect when it comes to working with the lymphatic system and the skin. Basically, this helps peppermint move congestion by going deep into the lymphatics and pushing it out through the pores and the peripheral of the body. This is part of its eliminatory quality, and one of the main benefits that peppermint has is going deep 
but also going surface at the same time. So we find those who have a lot of congestion and pain might find peppermint able to help move that. Whether it's uh, lymphatic pain or mastitis of the breast for women, or whether it's tonsillitis or inflammation in any of the lymphatic tissues, it helps to move it out of the body, helping the peripherals sweat out the toxins. We also see that at a blood level, peppermint has this capacity to support the elimination of dead red blood cells and activate the white blood cells, helping to move out and filter through the toxins inside of our body and push them out through the peripheral. It is a classic remedy to be used in colds and flus and mixed with other herbs as one of those herbs to help sweat and decongest the body. One of the classic formulas that peppermint was used in for coughs, colds, and fevers was elderflower, yarrow, and mint. In this way, these three combined help to go deep into the body and pull out congestions and toxins and pathogens. Because of peppermint's ability to open up the pores and clear impurities in the body, it's often used as a joint and muscle rub, as a liniment, as different ways on the skin externally to help ease pain. But we also see that fragrance, that menthol, that smell helps to calm down the mind and helps to focus us. So it's often then used in different types of food additives and different kinds of things like toothpaste, not only for its antibacterial qualities, but for its calming qualities. The oils help to relieve mental fatigue and really help us concentrate and be more calm. This is one of the main reasons why we see so many things that are peppermint flavored is because it actually gives us this effect in our body that makes us feel a little more grounded, a little more alert, and a little more uh, present in that sense. If you're ever feeling groggy or sluggish or low or fatigued, Peppermint is a great one to wake you up and help you concentrate more. Often what I'll do is I'll take a little leaf like this, I'll rub it in my hands, give a little smell, and it'll help to wake me up and help me be a little more clear. This is often used by university students as a way for more cognitive function and memory, as well as focus, but it can also be used by anybody who gets a little groggy in the mid-afternoons. A little peppermint oil kind of give you some pep in your step, <laughs> if you know what I mean. The other way we can do this is just use the essential oil. Put it on a little cotton swab, give a smell like that. It'll help to wake us back up, not in a way that like energizes us, but actually just makes us a little more concentrated and focused. This is one of my favorite things about peppermint is it helps me in those ways. But I also love that this essential oil helps to ease cramping and pain. So we might use this for tension headaches and migraines or anything like that. If we've got brain fog, this is the perfect remedy to help to ease our mind and help to deal with the tension headache that might come along with it. Another way that peppermint is often used is in seasonal allergies and sinus conditions. Not only does it help decongest the nose and the lymphatic fluids, as well as move things out through the pores, peppermint has a lot of antimicrobial, antibacterial, antifungal, even antiviral properties. So it helps to clear all kinds of pathogens that might be in the body. This is one of the reasons why peppermint is used for bad breath, because it helps to not just clean the breath, but also kill bacteria in the mouth. We see it in toothpaste because it works with gums and helps to strengthen the gums, tighten the gums with the tannins in there, but also kill pathogens. So if you're gonna make your own at-home toothpaste or anything like that, you might think about using peppermint. Although like I mentioned with children, because peppermint is quite strong, the menthol in it is strong, we may wanna go with something like spearmint. So you decide, I feel like the mints in general all have this similar quality of antimicrobial properties, but peppermint is the one that has that, again, cooling and warming effect. So it really does a contraction expansion effect on the body and all the different tissues. This is what makes it such a great herb for almost squeezing out what no longer serves us. When it comes to formulating with peppermint, this herb plays well with others, but I often don't use it as the main guiding herb in a formula. It'll usually be one of those secondary herbs that helps support another herb. In the sense of our digestive harmony and our digestive tea, we use meadowsweet as our main guiding herb because it has a really profound effect on working with the digestive system, with the stomach in particular, and peppermint as a supportive herb to really help to ease both the flavor and to give a little more of that gas support and just work with any kind of cramping and pain that might come along with that. 
Peppermint also is one that we use in our bitters, and our bitters is one of my favorite blends we make, but we just use a tiny bit of peppermint because really we're trying to stimulate the bile and get the liver going, and peppermint helps to work with this, but more just eases, again, the same kind of quality of the digestive process and some of that inflammation that might be in the gut in general. If you've ever been to a garden center, you know that there's all kinds of hybrid mints. My recommendation is you nibble on each of them and get to know them and try the one that might work for you. If you're gonna grow this one, think of things like, here we have a chocolate mint, and this one is just so delicious. It has a nice kind of almost chocolatey flavor, as well as I got a little bit of spearmint here, which has that lighter, more uh, gentle kind of neutral flavor. But then also here we have this kind of licorice mint, and this one, has a sweeter, almost anise-like flavor to it. Mm. I just love all the different kinds of mints. They open up my body and make me feel alive. As you can see by this healthy patch of peppermint, it's fairly easy to grow. The only thing that's really important is to have a strong boundary because peppermint divides by root division and may keep going further and further and take over your entire garden if you don't have it well contained. What I've found is a lot of people put this on their patio in a pot or some kind of large container to keep it that way. Peppermint's an easy one to add into your drinks, mojitos, uh, you name it. There's a lot of ways we can have peppermint in our lives in an easy to use format. Some people love to use the essential oil because that's even more concentrated, but make sure if you're using the oil, you have some kind of carrier oil to put it in because it can be hard on the skin. All right, I think that's enough about peppermint. There's just so much about this herb. We could keep going on and on. It's been part of thousands of different medical research papers. It's been heavily studied and heavily used in the industry for all kinds of different health conditions. Remember, everything from digestion to weight loss to mental clarity to so much more. So use peppermint, find the right way that it can work with for you in your life, and start to blend it with other herbs because this one plays well with others, including community, yourself, and the planet. See you next time. Ciao for now.